So over the last decade, I've been building businesses in Southeast Asia, and yet a couple of those have reached that unicorn status. And that's amazing, but that's not why you're building. Much is said about unicorns today, right? People love them or hate them, and there's a big question on how valuable they really are, so let's not focus on that. That status can often distract you and not be a positive thing. So it's not this idealism of the end place. A unicorn is not the destination. So I'm just waiting for some prompts to catch up here. So anyway, um, what really matters is the company's internal culture, the critical business, the sustainability, industry position, strategy. That's what matters. Businesses are often hyper-focused on growth. When you are, your trade-off is often culture. It's well documented in Southeast Asia. What I run is something called bootstrap joint ventures. This is where strategic partners come together. We think about that bootstrap and we think about what it gives us. Bootstrap means limited capital, right? Starting from the bottom with limited capital. Sheer hard work and determination is what gets you there. But there's something else. The bootstrap here is not just the capital, especially for joint ventures. It's the culture. So when I joined Partio just over a year ago, there's a couple of things that really drew me to the company. The first was around the businesses that I was working with and the idea of what we could do. The size of the disruption is immense if we think about the industry. The clear articulation of that, the clear articulation of the opportunity to disrupt was huge and I found it inspiring. And I remember one of our investors saying, we're gonna change cross-border payments forever. And you're like, wow, that's, that's pretty ambitious. And another one, a very, very senior industry leader, saying we're going to build a company at the center of the future of money. These were not emotional points. These were well-articulated, intelligent people telling us what they're going to do. Cascading that attitude into your organization is critical. Taking your strategic partners and embodying that spirit, what the French called esprit de corps, into your whole organization is what it takes. So beyond that bootstrap opportunity, commonality is the key, actually, across your partners. I've been lucky enough to lead ventures where the common strategic interest and shared understanding of that, co of that collaboration was just there. It was evident. The culture is everything in your joint venture. What do I mean by culture? We're referring to that spirit. So often we hear about that as the spirit of the agreement, the way the partners come together, the way they set the business up for success. Every stakeholder, not shareholder, stakeholder involved in the JV must be connected to it here. During my time in OVO in Indonesia, Grab brought the transport and the food use cases. Lippo Group had an immense offline plethora of businesses. And of course, Tokopedia brought the e-commerce play. That projected OVO from a small startup to the number one fintech platform in Indonesia in nine months. Nine months. It's an incredible feat when you think how the incumbents had been there for years and their strategic advantage. But when the JV and the bootstrap come, they could not stop us. The logic of every partner, the strategic advantage, is important, but it will not break or break you. That's here, the head. What will make or break your business, your biggest threat, is here. It's the heart. It's their ability to really love and care for that company and project it to the future. That's culture. When the spirit or the intention of a company is clear, the heart is clear. When that is lost or diluted, it becomes a massive threat. And you can't get through the difficult scenarios in business. You know, everybody has tough conversations. As a founder, there's just massive things you have to discuss. If your heart's in it, you'll get through it. If it's just your head with logic, it can become toxic. I've observed that in some businesses, that esprit de corps, that, that feeling gets lost and it gets diluted through investment rounds and strategy and growth. As a CEO, it's my job to keep it real and have a strategy around it, culture of my board, my investors. With business growth, the board itself has to be aligned. A high level of unilateral trust 
has to be established across the board. Now, let's remember that my board members actually compete on a day-to-day -day basis, but I have to make sure they're aligned. And I have to have an independent business where my management people, senior people that I hire from industry, are able to have autonomy, make decisions, and grow this business. We are grateful for our founding investors. It is a huge privilege to work with the people that I work with. The, the invested people is not just the, um, the founders, the people in there, but you look at it, it's the entire organization. So there's three key behaviors that I see that bring JVs to life. It's a highly competitive industry, so we need guidance. So first of all, we must have a common vision of success. You're saying, of course, in every company. But I mean across different businesses, big businesses. And that will allow us to have that common vision. It allows us to understand what we need to do. And it allows us to execute the life out of it. Autonomy is critical. With that said, I believe in an open, clean culture in a business. So we have check and balance and governance at every level. And that includes me. I want to make sure my business is well run and transparent. The second point to me is my founders and their people have to show up as stakeholders, not shareholders, not directors, stakeholders. When they show up as a customer, they're going to put their business first. When they show up as a stakeholder, they're going to have empathy with my business and my problems, and they're going to help me. It's fundamentally different. I think about this as um, like putting a shirt on at a football game, right? You put the shirt on. You're a part of the team. It's not about your performance. You've got to be a fit for purpose athlete. It's about the team's performance. And when I'm in a team, there's only one thing I want to do. I want to beat the hell out of the other side, and I want to win. Otherwise, why put the shirt on? That's how you need your stakeholders. We're here to win. So the real secret sauce, the third point for me, is why this business is going to succeed, and it will, is the co-creation of the business. My colleagues and I, we have a strategy, we have a product plan, etc. I can tell you yesterday afternoon, I spent four hours in a room looking at product potentials, candidates, with some amazing industry leaders that gave us amazing feedback. And on one product, they just around and said, look, you know, Jason, just don't waste your time there. The problem's too difficult. The size of the prize is huge, but the problem's too difficult. Just don't waste your time there. I think I'd have spun wheels for a year to get to that decision. I span wheels for 20 minutes. That's a hell of a difference efficiency. This is why Bootstrap is so fundamentally different. So you've got to have that common vision. You've got to have shareholders showing up as stakeholders, head and heart aligned to your business, and that co-creation. This is how we're building this company. This is what makes me, I'm not a founder. I think Alice earlier was talking about being a founder. I'm not a founder. I'm a CEO of joint ventures and they grow really rapidly, it is a different competence, actually. And so I wanted to share that with you and just explain it. In the same way, you have to build that ground-up culture, and it has to be strategized. So when I think about my partners, again, I think about the way I do that. There's three things that I employ with my partners, and I do it all of the time. And I ask my team to police me. Number one is no one special. I don't care how big they are. I treat all my strategic partners investors the same, equally, all of the time. Execution, information. Information sharing has to be consistent. If one partner says, hey, JT, I'd like this. If we think it's a good idea, we prepare it. We share it with everybody. Everyone is equal. And number three is around confidentiality. I respect my customer's confidentiality. And there's a fine line with what I can share and what I can't. And I create firewalls that I never disrespect my investors and the, in, and the very deep confidential information we get shared with. So this has been my life. It doesn't feel like there's any secret sauce. I feel like I get up every morning. I work out. I work hard. I fall into bed somewhere late at night. And I wake up the next morning. And I can tell you I am truly energized by it. This is my third startup. I'm a startup junkie. I love it. I get to about five years. It becomes BAU. I get bored, and I'm like, hell, what's next?
This is what I do, and I absolutely love it. I'm nearly running out of time, but I wanted to tell you one reason why I do it, because I've not talked about my purpose. There's only, there's truly one reason I do it. I don't want to let anyone down. That's why. Not Stella, not my daughter, not my son, not my friends, not the person I love in my life. I don't want to let any of them down. I want to succeed for them. And it gets me up in the morning and I kick the ass out of the day. And I go into every meeting and my team will tell you, it has to be a great meeting and it has to have outcomes and it has to be focused. Or get the hell out of the meeting and do something that matters. Because we've only got so many hours in the day. Just rock up, make it rock, and get out. And that's not like some kind of star gig. That is about being focused, determined, having immense amounts of rigor, knowing your business, knowing your people, and living, 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 living your life in a startup. And I love it. I feel very privileged to be on stage here today. I actually dislike talking about myself. I love talking about my business. I hope that I got to share a few things with you. Uh, God bless you all. Let's just keep building this business. Thank you.